Fifth year anniversary, we are collecting ideas for items to be placed in a time capsule. You may have noticed in your bulletin a yellow post-it note. And what we would like you to do, uh, please jot down any ideas you have about what might be placed in our time capsule. Uh, and then you can place this post-it note in the container that's provided in the assembly room after church. Uh, it is uh, a wonderful opportunity for us to think about what the future might want to know about our church today and also from the past. So we're linking the past, the present, and the future. Now, also, I'd like to say, try not to uh, brainstorm during the sermon. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Are there any, uh, any other announcements? Yes, please. Our three-and-a-half-year-old granddaughter, Claire, who was in Nationwide Children's Hospital for 11 days with her mother, ruptured appendix, came home this past Wednesday. You know this is Worldwide Communion Sunday. There are people all over the world having communion today. And I wanted to mention our little grandson, nine and a half year old Tristan, the one with the glasses, at Worthington Presbyterian Church, is participating in the mystery of communion for the first time. The anthem this morning is very really beautiful. <gasps> Enjoy it. What is the one word our church is known for? Mission. Mission. You thought I was going to say the rubbish <laughs> mission. It's five weeks away already. We have been doing mission work. Uh, and I wanted to tell you about it. You need to hear these good things. Velma Hoffman, one of our younger members at age 96, knows how to make dresses for little girls in third world countries out of pillowcases, we just gave her a nice tub of patterned pillowcases and rickrack so she can make these dresses. Also, um, Judy Ogle is meeting us downstairs in our studio after church to get a nice tub of Halloween costumes to take to the children at Chestnut Crossing. And then I've saved the best to last. There's something in Shockton called sober housing. Have you heard about it? Shockton Behavioral Health Choices has nine <laughs> units of housing devoted to persons and families who are coming clean. It's on the corner of Six and Walnut. There's nine units there. And we just gave them a big box we had to use the dolly cart to take it out to Betty Hoffman's car of sheet, twin size and full size sheets and pillowcases. And they're also collecting towels and washcloths and pillows, so we will continue to have a box for that. Are there any other announcements? Are there any invitations for prayer requests? Colin?
Let us go to our hall of confession. It is only by the power of God that we are able to stand against evil. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Eternal God, we confess that we have failed to seek your will. You create us in your image, yet we dishonor your holy name. We call us to live as one body, yet we seek our separate ways. Forgive us, God of grace, by the work of your Spirit within us, make us holy and whole, so that we might live for your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We do have an assurance of pardon. Now stand firm in your faith, covered by the saving grace of God, and ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. In the name of Jesus, we are forgiven. Would you please rise for the passing of peace? Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each of you. And also with you.
And Mary's so scared. And Mel was scared because Mel could not find her dad. So Mel came and found her dad. And she said, you need to let my dad out of the castle. And what did the beast say? She said, what if I take his place? So Mel takes Mary's place. But the beast doesn't send her to jail. He takes her to live in the castle with him. Well, Mel was escaping Gaston. Gaston said, Yes, I was strong and buff, and he wanted to marry Belle. He was buff. And Belle was kind of nothing. So yes, I wanted to marry Belle. And then Belle met some friends. I was going to live here. Why? Stand up. No, wait. And they helped Belle get used to life in the castle. And then Belle and the Beast kind of fell in love. Yeah, everybody was happy as they danced. And then Belle looked at her magic mirror. And Gaston had thrown Belle's dad in prison. Oh no! So Belle went to go save her dad. And Belle told Gaston, well, I really like this beast guy. And so Gaston went and had a fight with the beast. Do not actually fight your brother. You can do it out. <laughs> and you think that the beast is going to die because Gaston stabs him. And the video dramatic death scene. You can do that. Before the Lord, 
And Satan also came with them to present himself before him. And the Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, From roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no end on there is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. And he still maintains his integrity, though you incited me against him to ruin him without any reason. Skin for skin, Satan replied. A man will give all he has for his own life. But now stretch out your hand and strike his flesh and bones, and he will surely curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, Very well then, he is in your hands, but you must spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and afflicted Job with painful sores from the soles of his feet to the crown of his head. Then Job took a piece of broken pottery and scraped himself with it as he sat among the ashes. His wife said to him, Are you still maintaining your integrity? Curse God and die. He replied, You are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? In all this, Job did not sin in what he said. The word of the Lord. The epistle reading comes from Hebrew 1 through 4 and Hebrews 2, 5 through 12. God's final word, his son. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory, an exact reputation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. He is not to angels that he has subjected the world to come, about which we are speaking. But there is a place where someone has testified. What is mankind that you are mindful of them, a son of man that you care for him? You made them lower than the angels. You ground them with glory and honor and put everything under their feet. And putting everything under him, God left nothing that is not subject to them. Yet at present, we do not see everything subject to them, but we do see Jesus, who was made lower than the angels for a little while, now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death so that by the grace of God, he might test, taste death for everyone. And bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. Both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. He says, I will declare your name to my brothers and sisters. In the assembly, I will bring your praises. The word of the Lord. reading from the Gospel according to Mark in the 10th chapter. <coughs> Listen again for God's word. Some Pharisees came uh, to test him. They asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and, dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, 
Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female, and for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. And he said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord. Christ. Well, I believe um, last week or the week prior to that, I mentioned that one of the reasons why ordinarily, one of my favorite words, mm -hmm. I use the lectionary. It's because it's a discipline. Uh, it causes me, and has caused me through the years of ministry, uh, to preach from the biblical witness in its entirety, and not just what might be, say, my favorite passage of scripture, or your favorite passages as well. Well, confession is good for the soul, and I must confess, as I got into these lessons today, I thought, whatever was I thinking of, to try and uh, preach on Job, uh, or this pointed a passage from the 10th chapter of Mark's Gospel on this World Communion Sunday. Well, if there's any danger for this preacher, it's saying too much. <laughs> I believe that God's Word stands uh, on its own merit, and so with that in mind, I'm going to piggyback, if I may, on uh, how Aaron uh, addressed the children by saying, or suggesting to you, that Job begins like a fable or a fairy tale. Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, there was a blameless man who feared God. Well, we know this setup. Uh, something out of the ordinary is about to happen to this man. Uh, a journey, a test, some kind of unexpected encounter. Nothing will be the same for this blameless and upright man. A journey, a test, etc. Nothing will be the same. And so we lean in and anticipate the roller coaster ride of this particular story. The same, I think, is true for uh, the text that, that Becky read from uh, the letter to the Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke through our ancestors. Gather around everyone and hear the story you know so well told again so that none of us forget. Hear it again so that the moral instruction, encouragement, or promise becomes your own and the next generation and the next and the next. Once upon a time, the prophets spoke and in these days, these last days, God has spoken through a son. So, lean in and listen for the timeless wisdom and will of our Lord. Then, if that's not enough, Mark gives us this classic setup for a showdown between Jesus and those who oppose him. Some Pharisees, the story says in Mark 10, came to test him, and we know what's coming. We know it will be back and forth between the reign of God and the rules and ruler of this world. We know, ultimately, 
that God's kingdom will come on earth as it is in heaven. But right now, in these days, we lean in and listen for the word of the Lord for us right now in tumultuous and challenging times. All three of these appointed texts will call us to attention with the familiarity of favorite childhood stories and, and that drama of, of good versus evil and the anxious hope of knowing the ending while simultaneously living our own unique journey to get there. So, my friends, lean in and listen for the word of the Lord about a man named Job, about the proclamation of the prophets, about the word incarnate in the Son and resisted throughout the ages. Lean in and listen about integrity, the, that elusive trait, priceless and yet all too easily and cheaply sold for a little more money or a little more power or status or adulation or self-protection. Hear the word of the Lord that bellows through all creation. Persist in your integrity. As the introduction to one of our confessions in the Presbyterian Church USA states, uh, the, bar, the Declaration of Barman, it reminds believers, test everything against Scripture. If what we claim is contrary to the word of the Lord, they write, discard it. If, however, our story matches God's, then stop at nothing and pay whatever price is required to follow this narrative. Persist in your integrity. The integrity of discipleship. Love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. Worship the Lord your God, no matter your circumstances. There once was a man Believers who persisted in his integrity on one day and every day. Will you lean in and listen in these days, about the last days and the first days, about the in the beginning days and the there will come a day about Jesus Christ. Remember the stories that tell of the one who sustains all things through his powerful word. No matter the rhetoric you are hearing, don't forget that this son, this one, made purification for our sins once and for and always. No matter what happens on, on any given day, Jesus is with us in our suffering, in the chaos of sickness and the relentless systematic march of oppression. Look for Jesus and keep in mind that God is mindful of human beings bringing everything to glory. Can you see it? Lean in and listen. Gather around close and hear again about Pharisees testing the Son of God, the one sent to save, Take a seat and witness the Word made flesh, fulfill the law, and make all things new, too. Learn what the Lord requires of us in our households and in the cosmos. Picture those who come to test the Lord of all. They're, they they've come with an agenda and a plan, a trick question, a test that they know Jesus can only fail. Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? Jesus answers with his own question. What does Moses say? And these Pharisees know better than anyone what Moses says. Moses allows it as if a wife displeases a husband, she can be dismissed. 
But Jesus nods and adds, Yes, because of your hardness of hearts. But I say to you, those God has joined together, let no one separate. Jesus takes the religious righteous back to the, to the in the beginning intentions of a good and gracious God. The will of God who created and called us good is union, not schism, community, not estrangement, compassion, not heartlessness. Women, Jesus says, are not to be discarded, discounted, demeaned, or dismissed. Children, too, are precious to the Most High God. Jesus gets indignant, furious at those 12 men who prevent the children's blessings. The kingdom of God belongs to these very little ones you are dismissing, discarding, discounting, demeaning those whom God has created, called good, loved enough to send his son to save. Do not ever, ever shun and shame, ignore or abuse. The kingdom of God is theirs. Once upon a time, there was a God who sent the son to save the world. God so loved the world, in fact, that Jesus Christ came to serve, poured himself out and died a painful and humiliating death to defeat sin, death, and evil. In those days, Jesus stood up to every test, fulfilled every letter of the law, showing those who believed and those who refused to hear what God desires, mercy, not sacrifice. In these days, days, some 20 centuries or so later, the Word still speaks, sustaining us with its power, infused with the Spirit. Lean in and listen, for once upon a time, in this time, our time, all time, and God refuses to remain silent and commands us uh, to speak up too, hear and proclaim the word and will of God, especially celebrating 200 years of active and vital ministry in this community. Hear and proclaim the word and the will of God. Persist in your integrity. Love God with all you've got and love your neighbor as well. Put no other gods before your God, no matter what the cost, and never forget that God is mindful of humanity. With us in our suffering, ever combating evils and bringing about justice. Get your back up and gird your loins whenever the vulnerable are sold for a piece of silver, trampled on by the powerful categorically dismissed, discarded, discounted, or demeaned. Women matter and deserve to be heard and believed. The kingdom of God belongs to the children. And to Christ be the glory. Amen.
12.1. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Let us offer our lives to the Lord. Will the ushers please come forward?
This is the joyful feast of the people of God. People will come from north and south and east and west and sit at table in the kingdom of God. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust him to share the feast that he has prepared. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to be our thanks and grace. Praise to you, O God, for all your works. You created the world and called it good, and made us in your image to live together in love. You made a covenant with us, and even when we turned from you, you remained ever faithful. Therefore, with all creation, we sing your praise, joining the song of the universal church and the heavenly choir.
Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Come to me and never be hungry, believe in me and never thirst. My friends, the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. O God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. O loving God, remember the whole human family, especially those who hunger for food or justice, those who lack homes or human dignity. So many are unknown to us, yet each known to you, and each a child of your love. Remember your people in every part of the world on this World Communion Sunday, redeemed by Christ, dedicated to service, and called to love. Remember your church in this place, um, in this particular congregation, a uh, celebrating 200 years, uh, to the light, to light the way to your grace and truth. Remember those who are ill or sorrowing those who are concerned for dear ones, those who have difficult choices to make, especially any known to us, whom we commend to you now. May they know that nothing is able to separate them from your love in Christ Jesus. And now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The hymn is number 260, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
and always. Amen. Go now in peace uh, to love the Lord our God with heart and soul and mind and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Thank you.